Can you guys see the screen? If you could just type that in the chat. Perfect, thanks, Lauren. Okay, so today, this week, the requirements are to do chapter eight, which is payroll. And I'm gonna do a couple of reminders and talk about some of the things that you should watch for. And also based on one of the questions I got, give some reminders that way too. And then at the end, you can ask any questions that you have that we haven't covered. So in terms of the settings, I already talked about this last week, but I like to leave the reminder in for many settings that you're doing from chapter seven, you need to exit any other open stage screens. And that will be something to remember throughout the course. And then the other thing I want to talk about, I see Nicole raise uh, the hand, is it, is it about the stage screens and closing them or is it another question? No, sorry, I just had another question about uh, some information that was on Moodle. I'm not actually on chapter eight yet. So um, I was hoping that I could just ask my question now and then I could come back and watch the recording later since I'm not on this chapter yet. Or would you like me to wait until the end of class? Is it chapter chapter seven or? which chapter no it's actually just on moodle it's um let me just go to moodle here quickly sorry it's the uh the solutions for cab files yeah, i actually I have a comment on that in this presentation too oh okay perfect Thank but you. then you can ask at that point so it'll be in the same part yeah because i did put perfect. a note in that uh as well so the other thing though i wanted to talk about based on a question someone already sent in is about entering accounts payable so the question was how come she couldn't do a journal entry to credit accounts payable? And the reason is that in the first couple chapters, we did journal entries for everything, which we talked about the fact that is not a way to do accounting because it would take way too long. So instead, what we do is we automate everything. So in the accounts payable, in payable, we would do every purchase invoice for vendors and the credit to AP will be done automatically. And the same thing goes for accounts receivable. If we want to debit to accounts receivable, we cannot do that in the journal entry, just like we can't credit eight accounts payable in a journal entry because those are linked accounts. So when we set up a linked account in Sage, it is not able to be posted directly to through a journal entry. And that's a control because if we posted directly to AP, it wouldn't balance to our AP subledger. So for example, if Joe Smith was one of our vendors and then ABC hardware was, and those two uh, uh, payables were a thousand each, our APGL should be $2,000, right? We have the two individual vendors for a thousand, that should total 2000. But if we go in and enter an AP credit of a different amount of 500, our AP uh, ledger would be 2,500, but it would only show that it's Joe and ABC that have those thousand dollars. So it would be out of balance. And that's why linked accounts are set up the way they are is you have to do all of your accounts payable and your accounts receivable through the payables and receivables journal and that's going to continue with other modules like we're covering today payroll so this was a good i guess um you know starter into the payroll module it's going to be the exact same if you weren't using the payroll module in sage which some companies don't but they might want to just record the pay role because say ADP is doing their payroll, they're not using the payroll module, then you would do a, do a journal entry for payroll. So that is common in many companies. But if you're using the payroll module within Sage, then you can't do a journal entry for the linked account. So does anyone have any questions about linked accounts and these modules before we continue? Yeah, hi Linda, that's Rebecca here. Um, is there, I know uh, when I had sent my question in and I kind of was stuck and I couldn't really kind of move forward with regards to that, um, is there anybody else that we could direct our questions to if uh, we're not getting an answer? Say that again. So if we're having a problem <clears throat> in a chapter or something and we're sending in like a question to you and we're not kind of getting a response right away, is there someone else that we could ask? with regards to an issue that we might be having? Well, not really. I usually like design the classes to ask questions uh, and so that everybody gets the answers, right? And I don't get, for some reason, my main email won't set up on my phone. So I have to use my computer to get it. So it won't be an immediate response. But usually if you can send your question in advance, then it's when we come to class like today, then I'll answer it. But if it's a stage question, like where you don't know how to do something, you can just use 
Google to do that because sage is a common thing. So you can just search for things that way, if that helps a little bit. Okay, thanks. But the textbook should guide you specifically through things in the most case. But if you do have questions and you send them, uh, you'll notice that I'll definitely reply before the next class time. But if it's something urgent, just send me a couple emails. Because as long as I'm on my computer, it'll come through. And I'm going to try to talk to Nate about getting it on my phone so I see it sooner. It's just the settings uh, are not working properly for me right now. So any, But no, no one had any questions about linked accounts, right? And I don't know if the person who emailed the question is on the line right now, but either way, uh, hopefully the video will help uh, this video talking about how the linked accounts work. So in all the chapters going forward, you'll notice that it'll ask you to do transactions without telling you what module. Although initially, like today, we're going to be covering payroll. And when you're doing payroll, right now it's going to show you, you know, go into payroll and I'm going to show the different screens you would go to enter it in. But then next week, it's going to presume you know that from this week. So it's not going to tell you it again. It'll just say, here's the payroll ledger, and you have to know to go into which module to enter it, just like you do for payables and receivables from prior chapters. So just keep that in mind for all of the things. Now, if it was a different case where, say, the company wasn't using payroll, yeah. then they would tell you that specifically to do it as an entry that, or that they're not using the payroll module, for example. Paper clip on it, and then you dangle it, and then I'll put, and they must be having colored code on all the Sorry, I can't hear you uh, very clearly there. Was that a question? If it was a question, just maybe type it in the chat because I couldn't quite understand that. Okay, well, we'll watch the chat here. So anyway, so linked accounts, just be careful on that. Now, getting into payroll more. So for the objectives of chapter eight, we'll talk about how we open the payroll journal. The chapter will help you enter the employee-related payroll transactions, help you understand automatic payroll deductions. And when we get into, when you're looking in the chapter about the deductions, just one thing to note that I wanted to mention is that if you're using this textbook, let's say, and this is Sage 2019, the tax amounts won't be correct. And Sage doesn't bother doing a textbook each year because the payroll tax numbers like the um, EI and CPP, of course, those amounts change every year. So just ignore like if you were trying to use this uh, Sage to do payroll in real life, it's not going to give you the proper balances for 2022 because obviously CPP and EI is different. And also every province might have different uh, rates for things and different companies have different rates for things. So what you're doing in this chapter, you just make sure the amounts you're entering match what's in the solutions that are in the um, Moodle site for this particular textbook, but it won't be updated to this particular year. If you were using Sage in real life and you subscribe to the payroll module, then you pay for that every year and it'll have the correct tax tables for each province. So hopefully that uh, helps with uh, understanding kind of the deductions and all that kind of stuff. Um, and payroll linked accounts, I just talked already about linked accounts. Uh, there's lots for payroll and that helps us you know, not have to set up different things for every single pay when it's the same account. We might as well say, hey, this is where CPP goes, this is where EI, this is the wages account, etc. And then obviously how to edit and review payroll transactions. And you'll note that it's kind of the same in all the different modules. We have that little pen icon that we would use to correct a paycheck, just like we do to correct a purchase invoice or a payment or a receivable statement, those kind of things. Uh, obviously, um, doing things when you're one other thing, just I, I'm going to mention this a little bit later on, but when you're adjusting payroll journal entries, you can do that by watching your entry as you're doing the pay run. So you can actually review the journal entry before you post it. So if you had the solutions from Moodle, like the journal entry list printed out, then when you do your payroll, before you actually post, you could say view the entry, make sure it matches. And if it doesn't, you're just going and correct it that way. That's the quickest, easiest way to do things. But sometimes you might have to adjust an entry after, or an invoice after posting. And the reason for that could literally be like in the textbook in this week, there's one transaction where it says we've made all our pay 
checks for all the employees, but one guy said, oh, whoops, you paid me this many hours of overtime and I actually worked six hours. In that case, that's a valid adjustment. We, of course, posted payroll based on the check information we had, but later on we have to make an adjustment. So we'll talk about the difference in doing that. Uh, entering employee benefits and entitlement. Doing payroll runs for a group of employees, it's a different way than doing it for one employee. So that's where it's a little different. Like when we were doing payables and receivables, every time you have one payable or one receivable, you do each one separately. But for payroll, we can do a group together, which is a lot more efficient. We'll also talk about, uh, the chapter talks about vacation pay, payroll taxes, also entering payroll transactions in a future year, shows you, of course, how to uh, display and print your payroll report. And then the extra step in payroll that we do is prepare records of employment and T4 slips at the end of the calendar year. So a few extra steps in payroll than we had in our other modules so far. So the reports to print once complete, in the beginning of the chapter, just like always, there is a list of what you can print to check. And this is where I wanted to talk about what's in Moodle. So in Moodle, you could see the report, but you could also see the CAB file. So it's a CAB file, it's .cab, and that is how a Sage file is saved. So if you do a backup on your particular Sage file you're working on, you put whatever number it is. It could be, you know, backup for January 31st, and it will be .cab. So when you wanted to open that file again, Let's say you wanted to restore from a backup. That's what you could actually do for those files that are in Moodle right now. You could just say restore from backup and you could open that specific CAB file. So as long as you save it in your computer and just save it in a folder called whatever you want to call it for the solutions for the CAB file. And then you make sure that those are in a separate folder and then you can open that specific one up. So if it's chapter seven, for example, you could open that actual stage file. And the same thing for this chapter. Uh, on payroll is if you wanted to go into the actual file to check the setup, you could do that versus just looking at the report. I mean, I wouldn't say you normally need to go into the CAB files ever. The only time to do that would be a situation where you go in and look at your report and it's not matching and you don't know why. You can't figure out what the settings in stage were that you did wrong. Then you could go into the CAB file and go into each part of the chapter where you did something and just match it to what they were doing. So for example, if it was an employee setup and you notice one employee is incorrect, you could go into Joe Smith's payroll file in the solution, look at how that one is set up and compare it to what you've set up in yours. So that is the reason you would do it. But if you looked at all the reports, if you looked at all your journal entries, so for example, I'll give you a scenario of how I check things in exams or in cases. For most things, I do have to go into your Sage files for a few minor setting things that I can't see through a journal entry. Like if I told you to set up a shortcut for something, that's not going to show through a journal entry, obviously, right? But things like payroll runs, AP, payments, all those things, all I need to do is look at all of your journal entries. And if they match at the end of the day, then we know that you've done things correctly. And that's the same thing I would suggest you guys do when you're looking at the solution. Look at your journal entries in the solution, match them to the journal entries in your tab file. If everything's right, you're good. You don't even need to do anything else. If something's wrong, go back to the chapter, check if you did something a little bit incorrectly. And if you did, you just go into the certain thing. If it's a purchase invoice, if it's payroll, if it's a AR, you just go in, hit the little pen and adjust it. Or if you find that hard, just reverse the one you did, that particular one you did wrong, and then just redo it again. That is a total fine thing to do. Now, one thing to note when you do that is if you do that, say you enter something wrong, and it was journal entry, the third journal entry in the chapter, and you enter it, and then you reverse it, and you go repost it later on, your entry numbers won't be the same, it'll be out of order, but the date's the same, and I don't, that, that's not something you're marked on. Of course, if you make a mistake and you have to fix it, it'll be at a later date, or a later time, so the entry numbers will be different, but as long as the entries are right, that is completely fine. So make sure when you're checking the solution, don't worry about which order it's in, just mark it based on the actual entry, that the date is correct, and that all the accounts and amounts are correct. So does that answer the question about the Moodle tab, like the Moodle solutions? Yeah, I think so, thanks. 
that was your question probably. Yeah, that's, it's kind of funny you asked that. No one had asked me that one yet, but I just, from talking about it last week, I just thought about that might be helped to talk about because usually for pay, for um, payables and receivables, if you look at the entries, it's pretty simple to fix things, but in payroll, it's a little more complex and the settings are very critical. That's why I wanted to talk about it this week is because of that reason. Okay, so then entering payroll, let's talk about this specifically. Hopefully you guys can see this. I know that it's a little bit blurry on this slide here, but if you look, there's the employees and payroll is the module we're going into. And there's an icon for paychecks, which I'm showing right here. And then there's another one called payroll check run, and then there's pay remittances. So I'm gonna show these individually and talk about what we use them for. But basically, if you're doing paychecks, the payroll check run, which is the second one here, is a lot more uh, efficient because you normally aren't paying one employee. Now, if you do have one employee you're paying, which could happen, I mean, someone just wants to pay, someone is maybe you have one hourly paid person and everyone else's salary, that one hourly paid person, you can go into paychecks and enter that particular pay for that one individual. But if you're doing a whole payroll, then you're going to go into this one, the payroll check run. And then once you want to pay your remittances to the government, you're going to click this pay remittances button. And as I already mentioned, payroll taxes are usually done automatically because we set that up in our settings. So for every calendar year, we would set up the EI rates, the CPP rates, the vacation entitlements would be set up for employees. So all the taxes and everything should happen properly. But there is a tool if you do need to edit it. So in some cases, things are set up and there might be an exemption for somebody. And we learn how to do that on page 268 at the bottom of that page in the textbook. It shows you how to adjust taxes if it's not correct. Okay, so, and usually before you ever do that, if you were in the, in this textbook, it shows you, it tells you to do it. So of course you do it, but let's say you were doing payroll in a chapter seven type scenario where you had to create the entire company and all the staff. If there was a problem before you go and adjust the taxes, make sure your setup for the taxes was correct, because otherwise you're going to be manually correcting it for everyone when really it was just the setting thing that should have been corrected. So other items to remember in this chapter. So if you're doing employee advances, advances offered to employees are entered as a positive amount in stage. And if the employee is making a repayment, you enter it as a negative, okay? So it's similar to in payables. If you had a um, invoice that you're entering, you enter it as a positive, but if there was a discount, it would show as a negative, that kind of thing. Another note is anytime you do payroll before posting, you can review the payroll journal transaction and compare it to the solution. And I already talked about this in the beginning, but if you're wanting to see for this chapter, the payroll journal transaction is on page 270. So if you see an error before you post, you can go back to the payroll entry to correct it. And if you do need to correct after posting, you can use that adjust tool, just like the other module. So that's if an employee had a pay check that was incorrect, we could just go into that little pen like we do in all the other modules. And you can't enter payroll as a journal entry. I already talked about this, just like payables and receivables because of the linked account. So um, this is a another reminder I wanted to show. So this screen here shows the payroll run, and you can see there's some check boxes. So the first column, it's a little small, says use, and you can see check marks. So if that isn't checked off, then you can't actually use this. And the one that's not checked in this slide is benefits for Quebec. So if this pay for this particular person, Julie, it, or I can't read the employee name there properly, I think it says Julie, um, if she's not in Quebec, obviously that would not be checked off. Okay, and then the other thing that's highlighted here is to make sure the vacation is done correct. So there's retain vacation or calculate vacation as vacation paid. And so these are all things the textbook will tell you what, how the, this particular employee should be set up, but just make sure that you're checking all the correct boxes there. And then um, now I'm gonna, just gonna show the different payroll screens and where things are entered just to show you what they look like. Uh, normally I go into the sample company so that you could see it a little more clearly, but in this case, the sample company doesn't actually have the payroll module installed. So that's why I couldn't do it the same way. So if you wanna enter one paycheck, you're gonna go into employees and payroll, 
enter into the paycheck button here, and this is what it's going to look like. So paycheck, it's just one employee. So you hit the down arrow, all your employees will be there, and then you enter in the, all the different items. Now, you'll notice something a little different than the other modules in this screen. So we can see income, we can see vacation, deductions, taxes. There's little tabs that you would click for all the things. And you'll learn how to do all of these in the textbook, but just note that there's different tabs here. And again, there's the check number. And then there's three dates that I wanted to briefly talk about here. Normal transactions, we have one date. So if we enter a purchase invoice and the invoice was dated January 31st, we just put January 31st. In this case, there's three dates. There's the check date, which is the date of our pay. Then there's the period start date and end date. So a lot of times people are paid for a period of two weeks. They could be paid monthly. They could be paid one, uh, one week at a time, whatever it is. The start of the period is the first day. The end of the pay period is the second day. So hopefully those dates make sense. Check date, period, uh, the start date and the end date. Any questions on that screen on entering one paycheck? Again, if you have a question, just pipe up or put it in the chat. Okay, next, next one is a payroll check run. And obviously, I already mentioned this. This is the more efficient way to do pay. And you can see in this particular example, the payroll check run has all of the pay, all of the employees. So you can see Marina, <clears throat> Marina there, Marty, Jerome, Mila, Lara, Helena. So basically, you can put in the hours, the overtime, the salary, and then you can see the other buttons that are in gray, the gross pay, the withheld, and the net pay. Those are automatically calculated because obviously Sage knows based on the settings how it works. And when you're, you can see the check details down below. If I'm on the first employee marina, down below it shows the check details for marina. You can see the salary, the every every all the specific information. So it tells you that her gross pay is 5168, the withholdings are 89065, and her net pay is 418935. So every time you do a payroll, if you have in the chapter the amount of all the transactions for the employee, just make sure all the numbers here agree. If they didn't, then that means something has been entered incorrectly. And you can see in this case, there was no advances. It says this period is zero, but if there was an advance, you'd be able to enter that as well. So the next last part of payroll is involving paying the remittances. So when we do pay, uh, payroll. Basically, we withhold from our employees CPP, EI, and income taxes, and we have to remit that to Canada Revenue Agency, CRA. There's also other remittances we have to do for people like, um, for example, if there was a pension plan that the company was using, anything like that. Workers' compensation is another one, and any benefit providers as well can be remittances. So when we go into the pay remittance button, which you can see right here, you can see we go into the payments journal. That's what it says at the top. It says payments journal here. And you say pay to the order of, you just pick which person uh, you're paying. So if it's um, Alberta Workers' Compensation Board, Aspen Life Financial Maintenance Enforcement Program, Receiver General. So Receiver General for Canada is the typical person that we're always paying. We're always gonna have in every company, a payment to CRA, which the checks are made out to the receiver general, and that's for our EI, CPP, and income taxes. And then we all generally always should have workers' compensation that we pay. And this particular company has no. Aspen Life Financial, but other companies will have different ones. Maintenance enforcement, that is where an employee has mandatory deduction. Sorry, someone, is someone trying to ask a question? Or just maybe put yourself on mute if you're talking to someone else. And then in this case, they have, you can see also Rocky Mountain Trust. So again, different, different companies for insurance, different companies for benefits, anything that the payroll remittance should be set up through here. And then the way this payment screen works is the same as the other modules, pretty much. You have paid by check, the bank checking account set up here, the check number and the date that the payment was made. Okay, so that's basically the screens that we're going to be using. So we're using the, you know, enter one paycheck, we're going to be doing the paycheck button. If we're doing a payroll check run for multiple people, we use this, and paying remittances is the final one. Now, I ignored one, 
I ignored time splits here, if you guys noticed that. And that's because that's in a later chapter. We're not covering how to do time splits here. A time slip, of course, is what you would guess it to be. Somebody has a specific time that they're working, then we'd be entering it there instead. So again, ignore that. For this particular case, we're only going to be doing in this chapter, the paycheck, payroll check, run and pay remittance. And then the last thing just to talk about is there's this there under the screen here is employees and that's where you could go set up a new employee other thing is that i wanted to mention is i did forgot to talk about this when you're doing paychecks normally just like if you're doing say you're doing a purchase invoice in payable you can check for your vendors and if it's a new vendor and it's not in your checklist you can just do a quick ad for setting up an employee you can't really do that there is the add button um, like you can see here in employees under the paycheck, I just went back to that slide. If I click add, it's not a quick add because there's a ton of information we need for every employee because of the fact that we have all the deductions and everything, right? So it's not going to be the same as we can just enter the name of a new vendor or a new customer. This has a lot more information required, but you can still add a P, uh, person here, or if you're adding a whole bunch right off the bat, you would go into this employee screen here and you can add all the employees that way. So that is pretty much the end of the things I wanted to talk about for payroll. And then to talk just a little bit about next week. Next week, of course, is chapter nine, just like in the schedule. And there will be a sub, her name is Joan Goy. So she's taught Sage lots of times as well. And that's because I'm gonna be at a conference. So I'm not available to be online Monday. So I'm gonna confirm with her if she's going to use Zoom or if she'll be using Teams, but I do, I've already added her onto Moodle. So if um, she's using Zoom, it'll just be the same. I'll add her and she'll be able to do it the same way through the same link. But if that isn't how she wants to do it, I'll just get her to send an email to all of you saying how you would access the class on Monday. So any other questions besides what we've covered so far? I hear someone's unmuting, so maybe you have a question. If you do have a question, just type it in the box if you're trying to talk. Because I'm not hearing anyone, although it sounded like someone unmuted. Okay, seems like nobody actually has any questions. So we will finish the class for the week and uh, thank you for the thanks, Lauren, and hopefully this helps. And again, I will I will turn off the recording now, and this will be posted in the next while. So if you want to re-review it as you're doing payroll, you can certainly do that as well. And hopefully that helps do the recordings. Uh, that was one thing I wanted to ask. Are you guys do you guys find that going back to the recordings has helped you? Or has anyone went back to the recordings? If not, it's no big deal. I have a suspicion most people that aren't coming to the class are just doing the recordings. But if you do want to, and Ryan says the book is pretty straightforward and Lauren's saying the recordings are nice. So that's good. I, I just wanted to check so that because I'm putting the recordings there more for people that um, can't attend class, but I just wanted to see if you found them helpful otherwise, because in a class where most people are attending, I didn't know if the recordings would be that helpful. Anyway, have a great week, everyone, and hopefully the chapter goes well for you.